Hi folks, co-tutor here and my name is Anil Deshpande. In the previous video, we have seen how the job intent service works. So let's see whether we can use job intent service in one particular scenario that I will walk you through. For example, I want to sync a file every 15 minutes, but I want to do it only if my device is connected to the internet via Wi-Fi. And then just to make it a little bit more complicated, I want this service to be enabled as soon as the device is booted. Now, can we use job intent service to do this? The problem that you will run into is you can't set the condition for stopping the running service. The same is case with you can't set the condition for starting a killed service. So in this case, you want to set a condition that your service needs to be restarted only if your Wi-Fi is available. This can't be done using a job intent service. Going further, you can't stop it explicitly. That is one of the major drawback of job intent service as we have seen earlier. And then last but not the least, you can't set the periodicity. You can only tell a job intent service to restart itself. How often you want it to be restarted, you can't tell that in the the job intent service. So what is the solution then? The solution is job scheduler. With the job scheduler, you can pretty much solve all the problems that I was talking about. And to be precise, you don't just use a job scheduler, you actually use something called as job scheduler and the job service. So let's try to understand both of these components. So when it comes to job service, it is nothing but a subclass of service. Because it is a service, it has got all those regular methods that you will find in a service. But we will be mainly concentrating on the methods that are very particular to job service. So they are on start job and on stop job. Both of these methods are returning Boolean values. In case of start job service true means whatever the task that you are doing it is a long duration task so probably you want to spawn a thread from the service and hand over a long running task to that particular thread so to indicate to the service that you are using this particular service for a long running task you need to tell that by returning true or false in the on start job method and what about the on stop job well if it returns true this particular service needs to be restarted if killed and if it returns false that means i really don't intend to restart the service if it gets killed that's perfectly fine leave it as it is so that is the reason why you use true or false return types from these two methods and they mean two different things in these two methods and of course other than that it has got a another method called as a job finished as you can see here all the three methods on start job on stop job and job finished has parameters job parameter job parameter basically contains on any information that you want to send it to this particular service you can think of it like a intent extra then the second parameter in case of job finished is boolean value and that once again indicates do you want it to be rescheduled after your job is done and if it is true it will get rescheduled and if it is false won't get rescheduled and when you create a job service you basically extend this particular job service and other than that you have to take care of few things in the manifest file for example you need to declare this particular service with this bind job service this should not be alien to you because we have seen this permission being used with the job intent service as well and also since we want our service to be enabled as soon as the device boots we have to add another permission which is called as receive boot completed so when you add this particular permission basically application gets notified about whenever the device gets booted or switched on for that matter so that is about the job service what about the job scheduler how do we schedule this particular job service using the job scheduler so let's see that part. Job scheduler has been introduced since API level 21. So this is something that you need to be aware of while working with the job scheduler. And to schedule a job, 
you basically use a method called as schedule on a job scheduler object and the argument that you pass to the schedule method is job info now the question is what does this job info contain well it contains all the necessary configuration that you want to use about when this particular service needs to be started for example you can say this is the minimum bandwidth i want this is the minimum battery level i want how often do you want this particular service to be run what is the job id whether it should be started at the start of the device any network requirements whether it needs to work only on wi-fi or whether it needs to only work on the cellular network whether you have any kind of a back off policy latency so there are quite a number of things that you can think of when you want to schedule a particular service and all of this information is available in the job info you don't actually create a job info itself it has got a, another utility class called as builder so you basically pass all these arguments and then create a build invocation that basically gets you the job info object and then you have a component name and no surprises here component name in android basically means either an activity service a broadcast receiver or a content provider and in this case it is the class that extends the job service so i think we now know enough of theory the next part is we have to have a look at the code to understand how this is actually implemented but let's do that in the next video so stay tuned for the next video that brings us to the end of this particular video don't forget to like comment share the video and subscribe to the channel take care bye